Journey into space. BBC presents Jet Morgan in Operation Luna. October the 19th, 1965. In the Australian outback, many miles from the nearest town, stands the rocket ship that is about to carry Jet Morgan and his crew to the moon. Beside Jet, the captain, there are Stephen Mitchell, engineer, Lemmy Barnett, radio operator, and Doc Matthews. That's me. Already the scaffolding has been removed, and the ground crew have taken cover from the shattering rocket blast that is soon to send the moon ship on its way. Within the ship, outwardly calm and strapped to our couches, the four of us who are to make this momentous journey are anxiously waiting for our captain to launch us out into space. Zero minus 45 seconds. Hello, control. Stand by for firing. Standing by and good luck, Luna. Switch on recorder. Recorder on. Doc, gyros. Gyros. Okay, Mitch. Okay, Jet. Doc. Okay. Lemmy. Okay, I think. Stand by for count off. Don't anybody try to move. Don't even try to raise your head. Let me lie down. Oh, I'm only getting comfy. Lie flat and stay flat. Oh. Firing in 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Contact! Jet, what's wrong? She's shaking like a leaf. Quiet, let me see your breath. She's shaking herself to pieces. Hide 6.8 miles. Velocity 3,750. Oh, oh, what's happening? Jet, I, I can't move. Zero plus 20. Hide 12.1 miles. Velocity 4,350. Oh, 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 I can't stand it. Hang on, Lemmy. It won't last long. Oh, oh, why did I ever come? Zero plus 30. Oh, I wouldn't go through that again for all the rice in China. You'll be going through it again in just a few moments. Oh. Just as soon as we've jettisoned the booster and cut in the second motor. Oh, no. I'll, I'll be pushed right through this couch and out the other side. You all set, Mitch? Yes, Jet. Doc? Ready. Okay, Doc. Booster. Jettison switch. Stand by. Jettison switch. Contact. Now. <laughs> Hello, Control. Booster stage jettisoned. Standing by to cut in atomic motor. Waiting for your signal. Over. Hello, Control. Booster now jettisoned. Waiting for your signal. Over. Hello, Control. Hello. What's up, Jet? They don't answer. Hello, Control. Hello. Lemmy, any idea what's wrong? Well, according to the indicator, she's still working. But if you ask me, the shock when you blew the booster off, it must have smashed every valve in the ship. Radar's still working, Jet. Hello, Control. Hello. We can't wait much longer, Jet. We're losing momentum every second. We won't make it. I'll give them one more try. If they don't answer, we'll have to use our own judgment. Hello, Control. Hello. Hello. They still don't answer. Let me switch yeah. on the televiewer, stern view. Televiewer, stern view, on. Uh, booster stage is still behind us, but dropping away fast. Stand by to cutting the motor, Mitch. We'll give her full power. Don't overdo it, Jet. We can't afford the fuel. Now watch the tank gauges. We'll cut out as soon as number one tank is empty. Are you ready? Ready. Then stand by... Everybody batten down. Okay, Jet. Atomic motor, fire! <laughs> Lie flat. This is going to be unpleasant. Very unpleasant. Sake. 
Oh. Oh. Is, is it over? Yes, Doc. Oh. For the time being, anyway. You all right? Like you get when a fast lift drops away from under yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, space sickness. Brought on by zero gravity conditions. Well, I yeah. feel a little dizzy, but I'm all right otherwise. Look, we'd all better lie still for a few minutes. Well, let's hope we've hit the right speed. We certainly won't be under. You didn't switch off soon enough, and we used up a little of the reserve fuel. You think we might be going too fast, then? Well, maybe, but there's nothing we can do about it yet. I'm sorry, but the acceleration was so great, I thought I'd never press the switch. We must get through to control. Uh, Lemmy, if you feel yep. fit enough, get up and get to work on that radio. Yes, Jet. Oh, soon as you like. News from home will make me feel a lot better. Well, get going. Oh, oh, here! Oh, 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 oh! Lemmy! Oh, he's yeah. drifting up to the ceiling. Jet, Jet, get me down! Help! <laughs> Don't panic, Lemmy. Serves you right for getting off your bed without your boots on. Surely you know better than that. Well, all I did was bend down to pick them up and I, I shot straight up here. You should have held onto your couch when you reached out for them. Well, can't you throw them up to me? Pull yourself down by the rail, Lemmy. That will get you within easy reach of your bunk. Oh, 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 just to move makes me feel worse. I, I feel just like a feather. Well, you certainly don't weigh anymore. None of us do. Yeah, is it going to be like this all the way to the moon? I'm afraid so, Lemmy. But you'll get used to it. Now, pull yourself down. It's slowly. Not too hard or you'll hit the floor. Like this? Yeah, that's it. Now, put your magnetized boots on, Lenny. Yeah. In fact, I think we'd all better put them on. Right. Okay, Jim. Okay, and them keep on. them on. Keep them on at all times while zero gravity conditions last. What, you, you mean we even wear them when we sleep? <laughs> no, you can take them off then, but keep a good hold in your bunk while you do it or you'll go drifting up to the roof again. Uh, <clears throat> well, that's mine fixed. Now we'll see how it feels. Yeah. Well... There's no trouble standing. What's it like to walk, Doc? Uh, okay. Feel a bit um, lightheaded, like my feet are anchored and my head's adrift. Try walking up the wall. I? Yes, go on. Doc should be easy. <laughs> hey, hey, how's that? <laughs> if you could do that down on Earth, you'd earn a fortune in a circus. Well, come on, come on, try it. Come on, Lemmy, we'll have a walk on the wall. Yeah, we'd do better than that. We walk on the ceiling. <laughs> well... Welcome to the land of upside down. I ah, don't feel very different from being the right way up. It might be the ship's cabin that's upside down, not us. Yeah. Oh, don't hang up there like that. I feel bad enough as it is. Hey, what about that radio? Yes, come on, Lemmy. Cut out the fun and games. Try and get that radio working. Well, for height, yes, but what about course? Well, if necessary, we'd have to take fixes on the sun and planets, but, well, let's hope it doesn't come to that. It'll take some figuring. Maybe I'd better start getting those fixes. No, 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 you, you take it easy. Um, got anything for him, Doc? Sure, Jet, the anti-sickness pills. Uh, but he may have trouble in swallowing them. Now, don't you worry, Mitch. Let me all get that radio going. You can bet on it. I hope so. <laughs> Isn't he ever going to find the trouble? Twenty hours he's been at it and not a peep out of the darn radio. Oh, I'll take it easy, Mitch. He's doing his best. He's been working all this time with no sleep. He can't do more than that. We should never have brought him. He's psychologically unsuitable. That's a matter of opinion, but now he's here, the least we can do is let him get on with it. But why does he have to take so darn long? Doesn't he know every second is carrying us further and further away from the Earth, possibly to our deaths? Oh, it's not that bad, Mitch. We can figure our approximate speed and position if it comes to it. We'll give Lemmy a couple of hours more. Yeah, what if he still hasn't got through to control? Well, we'll wait a couple of days until our velocity has dropped to minimum and then turn the ship over and go back. Go back? Go back? This ship's not turning back. It's set out to land on the moon and it's going to do it. But to attempt to land without accurate details of our position and velocity would be suicide. We're not turning back. But if our speed is too high, we'll use up too much fuel during landing. We'll be on the moon, all right, but how do we get off again? We've got to take a chance. Oh, no, not that kind of chance. I'm not taking any unnecessary risks with the lives of this crew. If the radio isn't working within 48 hours, we're turning back. We're not turning back. Am I the captain of the ship or are you? Sure you are, as long as you carry out the job I hired you for. But remember, this ship is mine. I designed her. I built her and she's going to the moon. 
Neither you, nor Lemmy, nor, nor anybody else is going to stop her. One more word out of you, Mitchell, I'll put you under arrest. <laughs> oh, that's funny, that is. Where do you think you are? At sea? What are you going to do? Put me in irons? Well, not quite. I'll have you tied to your bunk. And there you'll stay till we get back home. Go on, try it. Try it. Just try and lay a hand on all me. All right, all right, Mitch, Jet, break it up. Come on, you're carrying on like a couple of screws. You stay kids. out of this, Doc. If I want your advice, I'll ask for now, it. Now, look, Jet. It but... seems we have a case of mutiny on our hands. Mutiny? Well, what else is it? While I'm captain of this ship, you'll do as I say. Now, wait a minute, Jet. I didn't... All right, all right, we'll forget it. But if I decide to go back, we go back. Is that clear? Now, get over the telescope and start taking those bearings. Maybe having something to do will make you feel better. It'll take hours. How you doing, Lemmy? Well, I'm, I'm putting it all together again mm -hmm. now and, and hoping. Can I be of any help? Oh, yes, Doc. You can pass us a few things as I ask for them. But be careful. One touch and they go shooting all over the place. <laughs> Talk about light and airy like a fairy. <laughs> okay, I'll be careful. Then uh, hand us that for a start. Yeah. So. Here, uh, how's the mutiny going? Well, they seem to have forgotten it for the moment. And they've got enough trouble on their hands trying to work out our position. Do you think they'll do it? Hmm, I guess so. But it'll take a long time. You know, our real hope is you, Lemmy. Yeah. You and that radio. What made Mitch flare up like that? I don't know. Maybe the thought that he wouldn't get to the moon at all. Or maybe the cramped conditions and lack of gravity had something to do with it. Who can tell? Nobody has ever been in our circumstances before. And is that screwdriver, will you, Doc? Oh. That's it, Tom. Let me. Yes, Doc? Was the recorder switched on during that row? I... Whoa. No, it wasn't. Oh, pity. Eh? Yeah, I'd like to have kept a record of every word spoken during this trip. What for? Well, for when we get back home. You see, all manner of things can be concluded from the way men act and what they say. It would have helped guide us in the future. Yeah, there must be some reason why two men perfectly stable on Earth should jump at each other's throat less than 24 hours after leaving it. Uh, there, there was no need for it, Lemmy. Just doesn't make sense. I'm not jumping at anybody's throat. Neither are you. Yeah, not yet you're not, but watch it. No knowing what might happen if you had nothing to do but sit and wait, just as Jack and Mitch were doing. Do you think we should turn back, Doc? Yes, unless you can get that radio working. However much figuring we do up here, Lemmy, we may overlook something. We can't be sure our deductions are correct. Oh, I think so, too. Jet was right. Mitch ought to have known better. No, well, maybe. That still doesn't excuse Jet for losing his temper. No. Can they hear what we're saying? Mm, if they were listening, they might. Their heads are so full of mathematical formulas, I doubt if at this moment they've... And each time she should have worked. Mm. And three times I've had to pull it to pieces again. Even the emergency cutting circuits don't work. I can't understand it. And I'm worried. Well, you can't do more than your best. Oh, it makes me feel like I'm letting the ship down. Oh, don't go getting to feel that way, Lemmy. Uh, well, now, that's it. For the fourth time. Now, let's see if we get any current through her. Yes, it's there. Yes, we've made it. No, no, wait. Don't let's get too excited. We're not through to home yet. Oh, then give them a call, for goodness sake. Try to raise them, Lemmy. Hello, Control. Rocket ship Luna calling Control. If you love me and can hear me, let's hear from you. Over. Well, not a peep. They should be receiving us. There's bags of aerial current. Oodles of it. They could hear us on Mars with this equipment. Hey, listen. What's that? Oh, 
Gives you the creeps, doesn't it? Haven't you any idea what it is? It sounds like music, but like music I've never heard before. Hey, can I hear a, a, a voice there? I don't know. I can't make it out. Uh, Jet, Mitch, come over here. Listen to this. Got the radio working? Well, kind of. Have you contacted Control? We tried to, but whether this is them or not, I, I don't know. Well, if it's not Control, then what is it? Search me. Are you sure she's on the right frequency, Lemmy? Yes, so far as I can tell. There's no reason why she should drift off. Not with them crystal stabilizers in there. Here, it's gone. Packed in again. Ah, uh, try once more, Lemmy. Call them again. Hello, Earth. Hello, Control. Rocket ship Luna calling. Trying to contact you. Can you hear us? Come in, please. Hello, Luna. Can hear you. Strength 4.5. Hey, it's them. It's them. We made it. Hello. Uh, hello, hello. This is Morgan. Can you still hear me? Hearing you loud and clear. Oh, thank goodness. We've been with you ever since the takeoff. The world's largest telescopes have been following you all the way. I should think every amateur radio station on Earth has been listening to you. I? You mean you've been hearing us all the time? Except when Lemmy took the radio to pieces. Oh, thank goodness for that. Time is now 3 hours, 11 minutes and 54 seconds, universal time. Time from takeoff is 0 plus 27 hours, 11 minutes and 59 seconds. Your distance from Earth is 142,000 miles. Your speed is 4,200 miles per hour. Your position is as follows. Well, that's more like it. Now we know where we are and what we're doing. There's no question of turning back now. According to control, we're on course and our speed is very nearly correct. What difference there is isn't worth worrying about. We should reach the neutral gravitational point between Earth and Moon three Earth days from now. The Moon will then be only 23,600 miles away. Our speed will be only a few miles an hour, but enough to overcome the pull of the Earth entirely. From then on, we'll be falling towards the Moon's surface. If we were back on Earth, we'd drink to this. <laughs> Cold tea is all we have. <laughs> How about a cigarette, Doc? Do you think the oxygen supply can stand it? Yes, I think it might. Shall I get them, Jen? Yes, Doc, one each. And after that, we'll organize the watches. Four hours apiece. Now, I'll take first watch. The rest of you can get some sleep. You'll need it. We all need it. The toughest part of this trip is yet to come. Hey, Doc. Yeah, Lemmy? Push us up a banana, will you? <laughs> Maybe must you always eat your meals upside down on the ceiling? <laughs> what difference does it make? Food goes down, or should I say up just the same? Well, it looks undignified. It's a great idea for parties. Think of the room it saves. You're not at a party. Anything more to eat, Lemmy? No, thanks, Doc. Okay, then push your empties down. I'll storm away. Here, how about a little after-dinner music? <laughs> oh, no, Lemmy, not that. Well, we've got to do something to pass the time. Why did I ever suggest that each member of the crew should be allowed to bring one small personal object with him? Well, I'm glad you did, Jet. Aren't you? Well, yes, but mouth organs should have been banned. Why couldn't he have brought a, a book or something? Every man to his taste. What was that? A meteor hit the ship. Emergency stations. Lemmy, emergency. An animal lay upside down on the ceiling. Lemmy, get the spacesuits. Don't panic, Jet. I'm on the way. Air pressure constant. We don't seem to be losing any. A meteor bumper must have worked. Well, that we'll find out. Meanwhile, get your spacesuits on just in case. Ah, here you are. Red for Doc. Yep. Blue for Jet. Yellow for Mitch. Buzzer, will you? Well, Doc? Yeah, air supply okay, oxygen supply okay. Fuel tanks and motors seem to be intact. No damage there as far as I can see. Hello, Control. Luna calling. Hello, Luna. A meteor just hit us. Emergency procedure. Now hit us take... somewhere. Yeah, but Stand we seem to be all right, Jim. Look, Doc, we've by. just been hit by a meteor. It must have done something to us. But what? Well, how should I know? Somebody will have to go out there and look. What? What, out there? Outside the ship? Into, into nothing? I'll go. No, Mitch. This is my job. 
Besides, you're more important to the crew than me. I'll go. What, you, you, you mean there's a uh, chance that... It'll uh... be the first time any man has ever been out there in space, and I designed the suit he'll wear. You tested it, didn't you? As far as was possible on Earth, yes. But this is different. This is the real thing. Look, let's not start another argument. We'll draw for it. Well, fair enough. All agreed? Agreed. Right. Uh, Lemmy, get one of the navigational tables. Yeah. Open it up, place it face down on the control table with your eyes shut. Right. Okay, here it goes. Uh, we'll guess the page number. Whoever gets nearest goes outside, okay? Uh, Mitch? 136. Doc? Uh, 127. Lemmy? 149. And I'll take, um, 155. Uh, what is it, Lemmy? 153. Then it's me. Stand by to open the airlock. Airlock. Contact. Airlock, full pressure. Open the hatch. Right. I'm going down. Fastening helmet. Over to intercom. Helmet fastened. Okay. I'm ready. Close the hatch and exhaust the airlock. Suit now inflating. Air pressure of zero. And open the main door, Doc. I'm going out. What is it, Jet? It's more beautiful than I ever dreamed. What, the door? No, no, the stars. Millions of them. Literally millions. Now, leaving door and walking upside of ship. I'll make a complete circuit. Uh, how's the suit, Jet? Okay? Fine. More comfortable than I'd hoped. How are the boots? Perfect. And now, hitching the safety lines. And walking towards nose. Any sign of where the meteor hit us? Yet. Here, ask him if he can see the moon. One thing at a time, Lemmy. Finding where that meteor landed is more important. I found it. About 13 feet from the nose. Much damage, Jet? No, nothing to worry about. Must have been minute. Only a small area of the bumper has vaporized. Well, let's thank our lucky stars. It wasn't a larger one. You must come out here, all of you. Come on. This is a sight you've got to see. We can't all go. Somebody must stay. Uh, look, I'll stay, Mitch. You and Lemmy go. You sure, Doc? Yeah, yeah. Um, by way of compensation, you can let me be the first to step on the moon. It's a deal, Doc. Now, if you wouldn't mind opening the airlock again, Lemmy and I will get started. What a sight. Did you ever see so many stars? So many different colours. Yeah, and they don't twinkle like they do on Earth. There's no atmosphere to make them twinkle. So small they look and, and bright. Jeb, how fast are we going? Uh, about uh, 2,000 miles an hour. But we don't seem to be moving. Look at the moon, Lemmy. Even from here, you can begin to see the mountains and craters on her. How far off is she now? About 100,000 miles. Oh, no distance at all. Company bus ride. Here. Here, Jet. We must be off course. Of course? How do you mean? Well, the moon's not in front of us. It's to one side. She'll be there when we are. She's moving towards our rendezvous all the time. Hey, Jet. Have you taken a look at the Earth yet? Huh? You can make out the African continent quite easily. The southern ice cap. The, re the reflection is brilliant. Did you ever see anything like it? Oh, Mitch, if we never get to the moon, the trip was worth it. Just for this. Jet, I'm going for a walk down under. See how things look from there. Now, be sure your safety line is secure. We don't want you drifting off. Don't worry, Jet boy. Oh, if only Becky could see me now. She wouldn't know if I was on my head or my heels. No more than I do. Oh, yeah, what's that? It's the funny music again. Hello. Hello. Jet. 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 Jet, can you hear me? Jet. Hello, Lemmy. Hello, Lemmy. What's wrong? Jet, that music. Did you hear it? Music? What music? Oh, you must have heard it. It was like it was right inside me. Lemmy, pull yourself together. I heard no music. All I heard was you screaming. But I was calling you before that. Didn't you hear me? No. Did you, Mitch? No, Jet. Jet, look, let's get back into the ship. I heard it, I'll tell you. I heard it. Calm down, Lemmy. Stay where you are. Now, don't attempt to re-enter the ship until I'm alongside you. I heard it, I'll tell you. 
the same kind of music we heard when I, when I got the radio working. Only at this time, it was much louder. Like it was right inside me helmet. Oh, it was uncanny. It scared the living daylights out of me. It scares me now just to think of it. Lemmy, if there had been any music, it must have been coming through your radio. And we'd have heard it too. But there was, I tell you. I was calling you when it first came on. But you didn't hear me till it stopped. Lemmy, lie on your bunk. Get some sleep. What? Well, I don't need sleep. Yeah, you don't believe me, do you? None of you believe me. We do believe you, Lemmy. Now come and lie down. You believe me, don't you, Doc? You heard that music coming over the radio, didn't you? I wasn't out there, Lemmy. I was here in the ship. What's happening to him, Midge? What do you think's happening to him? I told you. He's unstable. A psychological misfit. You have been listening to Episode 1 of Journey into Space with Andrew Foles as Jet Morgan, Alfie Bass as Lemmy, Guy Kingsley Pointer as Doc, and David Williams as Mitch. Other parts were played by John Casabon. The orchestra was conducted by Van Phillips, who also composed the music. Journey into Space was written and produced for the BBC by Charles Chilton. <laughs>